the party's practitioner, where do you start when somebody comes in? It and I want to preface to say that when I start with somebody who comes in with some bad knees and they can barely flex them, I I like it's like the elephant in the room for some people. It's like I, I want you want to do a really good job, but you really don't know where to start and you don't know how much is mm -hmm. too much and how little is too little. And it's got to be based on the individual, right? We have to look at them, what their tolerance is, you know, what's their motivation, what are their goals. And so you got to take that history. You really, so history, point blank, get to know them, get to know what, what their beat is, know what their goals are, know what their current movement patterns are, their pain level or how they perceive the pain, which is really important based on what they can do. Um, look and see what their activity limitations are and then observe them, observe what they do and look at gait deviations and posture. I mean, there's a lot more to this. This is an overall for you, but one of the things you can do really quickly, if you have like postar, we have an assessment we do. And I want to, you know, we go through these levels of different assessments. Some things are more applicable to somebody with arthritis and some are not. So you got to choose the ones that work for that individual based on their age and their conditioning and ability. So you, if it's a hip, you're going to look at all, or even, even not anything, look at the range of motion for the hip, internal, external, abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, and the same for the knee. Know what is their, what's their capable range of motion. So that's going to help you just get an idea that if you're going to do hip circles and footwork, where you really need to go if they have very little internal rotation about putting them on the equipment to make it more comfortable for them so that you don't get into a flare up right away. And, and balance and check their balance. So we want, I wanted to give you, this isn't everything, but I wanted to give you some key messages for helping move the person. You, you want, need to know the client's diagnosis, yes. Is it mild, moderate, or severe away? But I want the client to become a partner with you in learning to be a part of helping you determine how much is too much or, how, or whatever. So they've got to they be on this plate. But you can say to them, look, I know what I need to do. And I know what I think I want you to do, but we have to see what works for you. And you need to give the feedback and be a part of the team to help me determine exactly where your tolerance are. So you're going to report back to me after this session. We're going to start with this then report back to me and then we we'll see how we do. And then we'll make some adjustments accordingly. So make sure that you're teaching mat work and pre-Pilates work, not just equipment, because sometimes it's easier with somebody with arthritis to start with basic mat than it is then putting on equipment and overloading the joints. I'm so glad you said that, Beth, because I think one of the, you know, we think of our sedentary lifestyle, the average American now is sitting about 13 hours a day and sleeping about six, seven hours a night. And, you know, we, we tend to think that two or three hours of Pilates or therapy are gonna be enough to counteract the effect of sedentarism on arthritis and that's just not true and they we need to be engaged in movement throughout the day multiple times every time we go to the bathroom mm -hmm. every time we you know take a phone call we need to be doing the home exercises and so if we are not teaching our clients to do the home exercises which in our work is the mat work mm -hmm. then we're doing them a great disservice if right. we think they're going to actually get everything they need in the two hours they see us in a week so put, to put that to point, the, the woman I mentioned that came in yesterday with two hip replacements and no Pilates, I had her videotape me doing the four things I wanted her to go home and do twice a day. And those are the pre-Pilates mat things, using a TheraBand or without, whatever that was for her. And she, that's her job until we see, I see her in a week so awesome. that she can start getting strong, stronger on her own. So the, you know, the use of video can be very helpful and pictures. So uh, then we, you know, create that program with the client as part of the team, determine their tolerances, test, observe, add, then retest to determine tolerance. You know, that just goes right into the basis of developing a program, test and observe, and then add and retest as needed. Know when to use short lever versus long lever, like a long leg or a bent knee leg. Uh, avoid in-range stretches. There you go back to the hypermobile. Avoid in-range. No that's where injury can occur. Know that each client will react differently. So no two clients are going to ha have the same, um, of the same outcome, nor are they going to react the same way. So just be aware of, of that. And especially depending on how they, how they interpret pain in particular. 
The goal is to always create a successful movement program without pain. That's your goal. And you're going to remember that the client has to be part of the team to help you create that.